he, when he found out everybody knew about it, he had to, he had to, he had, he had to flee. And he was spent 40 years in this wilderness uh, with his, you know, uh, taking care of his father-in-law's flock and all of that. And God called him from this burning bush. And then God said to him, I have seen the affliction. I have surely seen the afflictions of my people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I heard that cry by reason of their taskmasters. And I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. And I'm going to use you, Moses, as my agent of liberation to do this. Moses could not remain where he was and confront Pharaoh at the same time. Right. He had to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. He had to leave his job, leave his in-laws, leave his familiar surroundings, right. and move back to Egypt. Right. And once he made the adjustments, he was in position to be where God was working. And he was available for God to work through him. Mm -hmm. But if he had said no, he never would have been used to liberate God's people. He had to make some adjustments. He had to make some adjustments. As we go into this new year, God is calling some of you to make some adjustments. You know, I thought I was going to be this big time. Well, when I was when I was in the, when I was a teenager, I thought I was going to be an entertainer. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought I was going to be. And uh, you know, I had then when I got married, we, I got this job, you know, singing at nightclub. I was, you know, doing uh, opening shows for Johnny Taylor and, and Clarence Carter and all them boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 Watch yeah. out. Watch out. He used to roll through the Astro Club and I was the, I was the club singer. That was my aspiration. <laughs> but then I realized that that was not where God, that was, I, then I was thinking about God, I just realized that was something really what I uh -huh. you know, was going to do. Because I was selling insurance, I thought I was going to be this, this big time executive. I mean, I had gone through my life underwriters training classes and uh, then I was enrolled in child life underwriters class. That's kind of like the PhD of it for insurance writers. Insurance writers. Child life underwriters. That's major, man. All right now. I mean, I was major. man. All right now. I was on my way. All right. On my way to the home office. Oh, wow. On my way, then God called me to preach. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, then, then he called me to leave a job in 1977, making 500 to 650 a week. Wow. 1977. Yeah, that was a nice cool. little piece of yeah. change. Yeah, yes, it was. Now, yes, it was. I heard that. Thank you. You're around 40,000. That's, that's a nice little house. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah. Amen. You know, it's big time. I'm, I'm rolling. You were doing good. I'm, I'm rolling, man. <laughs> and God called me to preach. He literally called me when I was 16, but I didn't want to do it, so I did everything else I could to keep from doing it. But in 27, he just he compelled me to do it. All right. Mm -hmm. He called me, then he called me to leave that job to take a church for $150 a week. Ooh. My, my, my. my. <laughs> Six fifty. Oh, dear Lord. Down to one fifty. Oh, dear Lord. My mind. Dear Jesus. Six fifty. Yes, Lord. Oh, dear Lord. Six fifty. Down to one fifty. Oh, my. Dear Lord. Wow. 
That's an adjustment. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. If I have not made some adjustments, right, sir. Right, sir. I never would have taken that church. Mm. My karma that they told me never would have taken it. Yeah. I never would have finished college. Mm. Never would have gone to seminary. Mm. Never would have gotten called to this church. God, God. Never would have gotten my doctoral degree. Yeah. I might have been successful as an insurance executive. Might have owned my own agency because that was my goal. Yeah. To own my own insurance agency. I was good at that stuff. I never would have been where I am now. I may have been successful, but I would have been out of the will of God. That's right. That's right. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. I don't know where I would have been if I had not made that adjustment. Glory. 650 down to 150, but God showed us yes. that if you trust him, Glory. Thank you, Jesus. he will make ways out of nowhere. Yes, he will. Woo, glory. Amen. 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 I went back to college. My wife went back to college. My oh, wife was in school. Thank you. I went to seminary. She was in school. At the same time I was in seminary, God took care of us. God and is I Yeah. All right. Everyone, we're busy. 
Even Rahab, the prostitute, oh, it's oh, Lord. <laughs> was on her job. Through yeah. oh, the spies came oh, into Jericho. I was like, So her business was open, but she was open for business when they came through. But she recognized God's activity in his people. She trusted God, and God changed her life yeah. and used her in some extraordinary ways. All right, glory. And if God can do it for her, he can do it for you. I don't care what you are. I don't care what kind of lifestyle you are living. God can use you yeah. if you're willing to trust him. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, yes, sir. He can. Use you. Yes, sir. He can. Yes, sir. Use you. Let me close. Peter always saw himself as a fisherman. He prided himself as being a great fisherman. Fishing was his business. It was what he knew. But Jesus' plan for Peter was not Fishing for fish, but fishing for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peter was looking as well as others. Peter was looking for this Messiah yeah. to come to overthrow the Roman government and establish the Messianic kingdom during his lifetime. Mm -hmm. He was not looking for some barefooted guy out of Nazareth. That's not who he was looking for. That's not what any of them was looking for. Uh -huh. But what he did not understand was Jesus had a plan for his life, and it did not include overthrowing government, but it had been consistent in overthrowing hearts for the glory of God. All right, all right. It consisted of winning men and women to God. Yes. Yes. And the Bible says in verse 20, they immediately left their nets and followed him. Yes, immediately. Hallelujah. Now let me be honest with you. Even though Peter left the fishing business and followed Christ, it took Peter some time to grasp this concept right. of winning men to Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. Even though Peter and the other disciples followed Jesus, he nor them fully understood what their assignment was fully about. In fact, when Jesus was crucified, Peter decided to go back into the fishing business. Because he didn't fully understand his assignment. Wow. So he said, when Jesus was crucified, he said to his boys, I'm going back to this year. Jesus has been crucified. He's even seen him after the resurrection. But he says, I am going back to fishing because this idea of Jesus is not a work of life. And his boy said, we're going with you. I'm, I'm sorry, we're going with you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going with you. And so they take off. They forget all about what Jesus has told them. They go back to fishing. And they're out in this lake. They caught nothing. They've been fishing all night. They catch nothing. And they look and they see a shadow on the seashore. And the closer they get, they recognize this Jesus. And there he is, cooking breakfast. They got some fish and grits. <laughs> And they recognize it was Jesus. 
And it was during that conversation with Peter that Jesus reaffirmed his assignment. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yeah, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. He said, uh, he says, in other words, not only am I reaffirming your assignment, I'm giving you another assignment. Uh -huh. The original assignment was to catch fish. Uh -huh. But now I'm telling you to feed my sheep. All right, now. I wish I had a witness. All right, now. It was because Peter was willing to make some adjustments that on the day of Pentecost, after Jesus goes back into heaven, on the day of Pentecost, Peter preaches one sermon and 3,000 souls are saved. That's right. There it goes. Same people that was afraid that ran, that, that, that denied Jesus. The same Peter, on that same Peter on the day of Pentecost, preached one sermon and 3,000 souls Thank were saved. He preached right. another one a little later and 5,000 souls right. got saved. Why? Because he was willing to make some adjustments. Reminded him 